So uh, what's your name and what are you known for in comics? Okay, uh, my name is Mark Schultz and I'm best known for my my own property, Xenozoic Tales, which was uh, developed into a television show, uh, an animated show called Cadillacs and Dinosaurs back in the early 90s. <clears throat> I've also written Superman. I write Prince Valiant for the newspapers now and uh, illustrated Conan, Robert E. Howard's Conan stories. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> uh, how did you get into comics? Oh boy, how did I get into comics? I grew up as a fan of comics. I uh, <clears throat> went to college and got a fine arts degree in painting. Kind of drifted away from comics, but I kind of realized over time after I'd graduated what I really wanted to do would be telling stories. And I'd be telling stories visually, actually. And I came to uh, came to finally acknowledge that comics were the best way of doing that and keeping as much control of my stories as possible. So over a period of like eight years, after I graduated, I started developing some ideas that eventually turned into Xenozoic Tales. Was that your first book out of the game? Yeah, that was it. Um, it was something that, again, took a long time to gestate, so I was working on it for a long time. I was doing other art gigs before I <clears throat> moved into comics. But um, yeah, it took me a while to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. and. Uh, and when it happened, you know, knock on wood, I got into the uh, comic book field in the uh, mid to late 80s uh, when the uh, black and white explosion was happening. It was a real growth period. So I hit the, I hit the uh, field at the right time and uh, was able to uh, not only get my own project going, but uh, get work doing freelance work as well. And, you know, knock on wood, it's all gone well. Hmm. You know. did, did you go to a publisher for the book? Yeah, I sent my... I did a submission to about seven publishers at the time. And this is back in the day we could actually send it through the mail over yeah. the transom and actually get a response. I think I got a response from six of the seven publishers I sent to. And uh, I got work from Marvel and, uh, and Kitchen Sink. My original publisher offered me the chance to do my own work. And of course, that's the gig I went for, and I stuck with that as long as I could. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you say as long as you could, what, what happened to it? Well, it turned eventually over a period of several years. It was developed as a television series, and uh, and we uh, <clears throat> created a line of merchandising to go with that. Uh, but that played out over time. Uh, when the, the TV show was on for a year, and it wasn't picked up by CBS after that, so it was while it was a success from my point of view to actually get a property developed into a television show, it wasn't a success that would allow for like any kind of financial security. Mm. Over the over the initial uh, money I received, the upfront money I got for the uh, series, mm -hmm. so I had to start looking at other. Xenosoli Tales was kind of played out at that point mm -hmm. as a as a financial option, mm -hmm. so I had to look at other uh, other uh, sources, other uh, financial uh, possibilities, and, and started picking up uh, work writing uh, writing other comics and doing covers for other uh, companies and uh, mishmash of this and that, picking up illustration work. And it's, I've never had, I've never been in a position where I've had any one project or gig that paid all the bills. It's been a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and, and it all adds up to something. Uh -huh. So uh, what, what percentage of your work is comics work versus the other? Right now, very little is comics work. I should uh -huh. say very little is visual comics work. I write quite a bit. Uh -huh. uh, I can write much faster than I can draw, so that's, that's a big help. Um, I still do the occasional comic book cover, but most of my work uh, in recent years has been doing illustrations mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, I'm actually publishing uh, uh, illustrated books of my own material, of my own writings, uh, prose stories. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> again, it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to put a finger on exactly what pays the bills. It's, it's a whole conglomeration of many smaller jobs, yeah. and which also gives me a lot of flexibility, which I like. I'm not stuck. If one thing fails, I've got something else to pick up the slack. Uh, and I like the variety. I like, to, I like to be able to go back and forth between writing, doing comics work, doing illustration. It keeps things interesting. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I, I read uh, an interview online about how uh, you, you would like to go back to Xenozoic Tales. That's my goal. That's my baby. It's my own property. It's what uh -huh. I want to do. Um, I'm hoping when I finish the project I'm working on now uh, to have, I, I think I'll have the time to spend, to invest a little time into developing another Xenozoic story. Um, 
this is going to be a prose story, mm -hmm. uh, which I'll illustrate, heavily illustrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a little different beast. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yeah, it's uh, a different format than doing the comics. Comics is it's a wonderful medium and something I would like to get back to eventually, but it is so time consuming uh, to do those multiple panels per page. Mm -hmm. It's the medium that I feel closest to what I'd like to be doing, mm -hmm. but the amount of time you have to sink into it as opposed to what you can realistically see financially out of it make it kind of prohibitive uh, to spend a you know, to, to invest a lot of time in it right now. Down the road, I'm hoping to have more flexibility and be able to put that time, you know, on speculation with the idea that I'll get a paycheck at the, at the far end. Or, ideally, it'll be uh, seen as something that will allow, uh, will, will lead to a development in other media again. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of reestablish the, uh, the property as something uh, that's got... Uh, it's got developmental possibilities outside of just comics. Because mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, it's kind of, to make a living in comics with your own material, you kind of have to have other uh, revenue streams coming out of that property beyond just the publication of the comic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not, except in very rare uh, instances of super popular uh, mm -hmm. uh, publications, it's, it's there's usually not a much, there's enough money to come out of publication in itself to, uh, you know, to, uh, to to make a living at. Mm -hmm. And so that that's what kind of pushed you in the direction of the other arts. <clears throat> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like them all. I'm about storytelling in general. I like mm -hmm. to tell stories, and I mm -hmm. think everything I do in some way relates to telling a story. Mm -hmm. But again, my the media that I I feel closest to that I think is the most potential for what I ideally would like to be doing would would be you know, comics, mm -hmm. sequential art. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really <laughs> like how you're phrasing things very carefully. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'd like to ask you a little about uh, the cartoon. How, how did that come about? Uh, well, <clears throat> my publisher at the time was Kitchen Sink Press. And I don't know if you know Dennis Kitchen's sure. work. And he's uh, you know, not only a... Uh, Fantastic publisher, but he's very, he's very savvy uh, as a promoter, mm -hmm. and uh, he was able to. We, we created some merchandise through Kitchen Sink to promote Cenozoic Tales, mm -hmm. and, um, and this got the attention. I'm not quite sure the whole story, but we had three or four different suitors out of the animation field that were looking mm -hmm. to develop new concepts. They liked what they saw. They thought it had potential, and we kind of narrowed it down to. Uh, uh, production company that uh, that uh, had a game plan that involved uh, hooking up with Nelvana out of Toronto, a Canadian uh, animation studio, and they did the actual animation, and it, it worked out pretty well. How, how involved were you with the cartoon? Uh, I was involved in <coughs> accepting or rejecting specific story ideas, okay. uh, uh, plot ideas, mm -hmm. uh, and you know I got to say dealt with mostly the extent of it, that, that initial phase, just deciding what was a go or what wasn't for a particular story. After mm -hmm. that, it was pretty much out of my hands. Mm -hmm. And, and it was a good thing, too, because it's incredibly time-consuming. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it was, just being involved with developing the merchandising as well as putting the deals in place to have mm -hmm. it developed as animation took up way too much of my time. Mm -hmm. And, and I wasn't able to vote the kind of time I wanted to to continuing to write and draw Xenozoic Tales, but <clears throat> um, it was a learning experience. What I learned was that I wouldn't even be as involved as that going forward. If I ever have another property uh -huh. developed, uh, I would just uh, take the check and run, you know, mm -hmm. just accept that it's, the beast is what it is, it can't be controlled. You just take the money and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I read uh, Alan Moore was asked a similar question about his works being made into films, mm -hmm. and he said he, he replies the same way uh, Raymond Chandler does. You, you mm -hmm. take him into the library and you say, no, look, these are my works. They yeah. haven't been destroyed, and you, you just have to separate. That's <laughs> the way I look at it. I mean, I don't think the television, the animated show was horrible. I don't think it was particularly good either, but I, I look back at uh, what Hollywood did with, say, Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan. It's, it's not Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan, it's Hollywood's Tarzan. Mm -hmm. 
but there's the books that Burroughs did and people that are real aficionados of Tarzan go back to the books and yeah. enjoy the books for what they are. Yeah. Two different things. But <clears throat> I should have such a problem because the money that comes in <laughs> from seeing it developed in, uh, in, in those type of media, you know, whether it's television or movies or gaming even, uh, that, that can subsidize a lot of other worthy projects that you do have control over. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a trade-off, but I think it's a, it's a good trade-off. So what, what do you look at as kind of your, you, you said Zenozoic Tales mm -hmm. is, is one of your prized possessions of as far as something you'd like to develop farther. Do you, do you have other things like that that mean a lot to you that you're willing to do some of this other stuff to finance for oh, it? Or? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Just to, again, it's all... A